In this video, we're going to be doing a vertical motion problem, and this is just an application of what we already learned about the position function. In this particular problem, we've been told that a ball is thrown straight up from the ground, so it's thrown perfectly vertically straight up, not like out to the front or behind the person, but straight up from the ground with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second. We've been asked to find the ball's maximum height and its velocity when it comes back down and hits the ground. So the equation that we're gonna be using to model the position function is gonna be this equation here, which is y of t is equal to negative 1 half times g, which is gonna be the gravitational constant, times t squared plus v0, which is initial velocity, times t, plus y0, which is initial position. So before we can generate this position function, we want to set up a diagram and we want to collect a couple pieces of information. So this is the diagram of the path of the ball. So we're going to say that the ball starts at this point right here and it's thrown directly upward from the ground. So it comes up this way and we can draw an arrow to indicate that it's going up this way. Then it's going to reach its maximum height at this point here, and then it's going to come back down and then eventually hit the ground at this point here. So with a vertical motion problem like this one, we're always interested in three points. The initial point, the maximum height, and then the end point when it comes back down and hits the ground. And we're interested in three pieces of information at each of those points position, velocity, and time. So what we want to say is that y is position. So for this point here, we have to find position, we have to find velocity, and we have to find time. Same thing for these other points. For this point, the maximum height, we have to find position, velocity, and time. And for the last point here, we have to find position, velocity, and time. So you always want to put all three of those on your diagram and then fill in whatever you know. Then we'll use what we've been given to find the missing pieces of information. So first of all, we've been told that the ball is thrown straight upward from the ground. So if it's thrown from the ground, then its initial position, its initial height is zero. So we're going to say that its initial height is zero. And of course, if the ball comes back down and hits the ground, we know that its height at the end of its flight will be zero because it comes back down and hits the ground again. We know that it's thrown upward with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second. So we know that its velocity at the beginning is 96. We also know that this represents the very beginning of the path of the ball or the flight of the ball. So we're going to call that time equals zero because that's when this whole path begins. Now the other thing we know before we do any calculations is that velocity at the ball's maximum height is going to be zero. Because remember, velocity represents speed in a particular direction. And when the ball is thrown up from the ground and it's coming up in this direction here and it reaches its maximum height, it's finished moving up, but it hasn't yet started moving down in this direction. So at that very, very, very top point, it stopped moving up, but it hasn't started moving down. So it's not moving in any particular direction, which means that velocity has to be zero. Now remember, we've been asked to find the ball's maximum height. Well, the ball's maximum height is going to be its position when it reaches its highest point here, which is going to be this value that we find here for y. So we've been asked to find that. We've also been asked to find its velocity when it hits the ground. So that's going to be velocity when it hits the ground, which is going to be this value right here. So the problem has asked us for those values in particular, but we may need to find some of these other unknowns in order to get to those two values. So now that we've drawn a diagram, the next thing we want to do is try to fill out our position function y of t. So we're going to say that our position function y of t is going to be equal to negative one half multiplied by the gravitational constant. So if you've been given your problem in feet, then you're going to use 32 for the gravitational constant. If you've been given your problem in meters, then you're going to use 9.8 for the gravitational constant. And this function here assumes constant gravity. So because we have feet, we're going to use 32 and then we're going to go ahead and leave in t squared. Initial velocity or v sub zero, we already know is 96. We're going to go ahead and say plus 96 multiplied by t and then plus y sub zero or initial position. Well the initial height is zero so plus y sub zero is just going to be plus zero and we don't need to add zero because it won't have an effect on this function. So then we'll say y of t is equal to, here we're going to have 32 divided by 2 so we're going to end up with a negative 16 t squared 
plus 96t, and this will be the position function that models the entire flight of the ball. So we could go about finding these unknowns in a couple different ways. Let's start by setting y of t equal to 0. So we'll say 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 96t. Now if we solve this for t, basically what we're saying is we're going to find the values of t where the position or the height of the ball is 0. Well we know that the height of the ball is 0 at two points. The initial point when the ball is first thrown upward and then the end point when the ball hits the ground again. We already know we're going to get a value of t equals 0 because we have that t equals 0 value here. So the other value is going to be this value of t. So what we want to do here is we want to factor out a negative 16t. So if we say 0 is equal to negative 16t multiplied by t minus 6, then what we're going to end up with is t has to be equal to 0 or t has to be equal to 6. We already know that t equals 0 belongs to the initial position here, which means this has to be t equals 6 right here. What that tells us is that the entire flight of the ball takes 6 seconds and the ball hits the ground again at time 6 or after 6 seconds. Now what we can do is we can take the derivative of the position function. Remember that the derivative of position is velocity. So if we take the derivative of position, that would be y prime of t, that's going to be equal to velocity, which we can call v of t, and that's taking the derivative of this negative 16t squared plus 96t. So if we take the derivative of that, we're going to get negative 32t plus 96. So the velocity function then is negative 32t plus 96. Well remember, velocity is equal to 0 when the ball reaches its maximum height. So if we set this equal to 0, we would add 32t to both sides and we would get 32t is equal to 96. If we divide both sides by 32, we get t is equal to 3. So what that tells us is that time is 3 or 3 seconds when velocity is 0. And of course that means that the ball reaches its maximum height after 3 seconds. Now since we know that the ball has its maximum height at t equals 3, we can use the position function and plug t equals 3 into the position function to find the maximum height of the ball or the value of y when the ball reaches its maximum height. So plugging t equals 3 into our position function, we're going to get y of 3 is equal to negative 16 times t squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, so we get negative 16 times 9 plus 96 times 3. Well, negative 16 times 9 is going to be negative 144. 96 times 3 is going to be 288. So negative 144 plus 288 is going to give us a positive 144. So that's going to be our value for y, or the height of the ball, when it reaches its maximum height at t equals 3. Now we just need to find velocity when the ball hits the ground. Remember though, we know that that happens at times 6 seconds, or at t equals 6. So if we plug t equals 6 into the velocity function, and we have our velocity function here, v of t is negative 32t plus 96. So if we say v of time 6, that's going to be negative 32 times 6 plus 96. Negative 32 times 6 is a negative 192 plus 96. That's going to give me a negative 96. And so I can say then that velocity is negative 96. And this should make sense because we have a positive velocity over here at the initial point, And that's because, remember, velocity indicates direction. So because the velocity is positive, that means that the ball is moving upward. Because velocity is negative when it hits the ground here, that tells us that the ball is coming down. So the last thing I want to do is make sure that I attach units to my final answer. Remember we were asked to find the ball's maximum height. So I know that the maximum height is 144 feet. That's the highest point that the ball attains. And we were asked for the ball's velocity when it hits the ground. So velocity is going to be negative 96 feet per second when the ball hits the ground. And that's how you use the position and velocity functions to solve a vertical motion problem.